So, we will move on to the, the other interesting physics in consumer welding process which is metal transfer. So, I showed you a video in earlier classes. So, in a GMAW you melt and droplet is getting transferred to the work piece. How does the droplet get detached and then transferred to the work piece? Why should it do? Gravity. Is only gravity? EMF. Okay, so first we will take gravity. How would gravity assist the droplet transfer? Would it always assist the transfer droplet detachment or it can also resist the detach? It is always assist all the cases. Yeah, it is it based on the welding position. If it is downhand welding, it always assists, is not it? If you are doing uphand welding, gravity will not assist the droplet transfer, it is depending on the position of the welding, right? It is clear. I will show you a video and then we will come back to that. So, previously we saw one video. So, in this case, I showed you a video of two cases this wire and the, the other wire. This wire droplet transfer is much different. So, when it is getting transferred, it is transferred into a stream like an opening a tab, whereas in this case, it is transferred as an, a globes, is not it, as a ball. Why would they change? Right? Why would they change? Depending on the current. How does current? Only the current is going to change the transfer. So, what are the other forces which can influence? So, I'll, I have an analogy here bubble. Okay, so let us. I hope all of you played with bubble, right? So, I am going to blow a bubble. Okay. Now, if I want to transfer, detach this bubble from the tape, what are the forces that are involved in this de detachment? when the droplet is detached from this bubble. Which force would assist, which force would resist the detachment? Is it gravity? How does gra gravity influence? Suppose I am doing it here. Okay, if I do it like this, I already changed the diameter of the uh, bubble. By doing some way, some trick, in first case the diameter was bigger, in the other case diameter was smaller. Why would that? Which force? Which force? So, first gravity you said right. So, gravity now is promoting the detachment. Suppose if I am doing it like this, it is still getting detached even though gravity is opposing detachment, is not it? So, something else is playing around. The one force is the blow I do. Okay. So, you can call that blow, what do you call that blow? Aerodynamic force, okay. some force. Right, that is there. So, the blow I do, it always assists the detachment because the faster I blow, the bubble can separate from these, the, yeah, the point of generation much faster and smaller diameter, is not it? What are other forces you can think about? Surface tension, okay. How does surface tension help? Will it help in detachment or it resist? What happens to surface tension? Will it assist the detachment? It will always resist because that is the role of surface tension. It has to reduce the surface area. 
So, it would never allow the droplet to detach. If it detaches, then surface area increases. Okay, the surface tension would always oppose the detachment, is not it? What are other forces you can think about it? Hmm? Lorentz force, okay, so it is there, independent of Lorentz force, no current here, right? I am not blowing anything, is not it? Unless I have an, uh, like an X man or so, I can send some electrons whenever I blow, then I will be very rich. Suppose I am blowing against a, a wind, now imagine there is an air, is not it? Air pressure is there. Suppose there is a fan, I am blowing against a fan. What force you would generate? So, when the, the, when the bubble is, is going out of this mouth to outside, there is also something which is resisting. Air yeah, air pressure. Isn't it? So the air pressure would always push because you are working against the air pressure. Isn't it? That means that the air pressure. You can also say that suppose I am blowing against an air conditioner. So that always push the droplet to be it in its position. Right. So you can say it's a vapor pressure. So now, so we have a gravity, aerodynamic force, so aerodynamic force is my blow and then surface tension it is the bubble, the composition material and then vapor pressure it is atmosphere. So in a welding case of course we also have a current, okay. so you will also have a Lorentz force. So, Lorentz force, so this force gravity based on the location, whether you are doing a down hand welding or up hand welding. So, the G is a function of theta, cos theta, right. So, G cos theta, right, with respect to the work piece. If it is 90 degree, G is maximum. Right, if it is zero, it would it would resist. Right, the aerodynamic force is the blow force. In welding case, aerodynamic force is a plasma jet. Plasma jet force, plasma jet velocity. Right, so that is what is blowing the droplet. So, like I did it in, in my bubble. The faster or the, uh, the heavier I blow, droplet can be attached with smaller diameter. Same with the plasma jet as well. It will always assist the droplet detachment. So, the plasma jet would also assist the droplet detachment. That is aerodynamic or plasma jet force. Then surface tension, again it is material specific, right. So, it would always resist the detachment. The vapor pressure, why do we have vapor pressure during welding? So, during welding we also create the metal vapors, it would be going up, is not it? The mill pool vaporizers, it goes up, it will always push the droplet to be in its position. Same in the, in the bubble, suppose I am blowing here, so if we have wind is coming, right, the droplet would be attached, is not it? So, the vapor pressure which is coming from the mill pool would always resist the detachment, right. And then we also have a Lorentz force. Lorentz force is slightly complicated, that is based on the, the shape of the arc, okay. So, if arc is very wide, if arc is very wide, suppose if you have a tip like this and you have a droplet formed, if the arc is like this, the electrons would be diverging when they are travelling. If this is the case, so then droplet detachment is promoted because the electrons would diverge 
by pushing the droplet out. So, imagine now the arc is very narrow. Okay. So, arc is narrow. In this case, your Doppler diameter is already larger than your weld the, the electrode as well as the arc is in very narrow. In this case, the electrons will converge, is not it? Because the obviously, electrons will travel via arc sustained discharge recall. If your arc envelope is very narrow, you have a convergence of the, the tiny particles. The Lorentz force would be converging in this case these particles or these Lorentz force would resist the detachment is not it. If it is diverging it can take the droplet it is diverging, but they are converging that means that the force would be keeping the droplet in its place right. So, the balancing these three these five forces would determine the transfer kinetics as well as your shape of the droplet right is clear. So, these five forces how it is balanced the forces which are going to assist the droplet transfer the forces which are going to resist the droplet transfer right if they are perfectly balanced system is in equilibrium. Okay. In order Doppler to be transferred one of the forces which assist should be maximized right either gravity or vapor jet vapor jet means the, the plasma jet the aerodynamic force or Lorentz force one of them should be maximized to overcome the resisting forces. Okay. So, we will see the force balance and that would determine the shape as well as the transfer kinetics number of droplet transferred per unit time yes is clear. So, that is what he said forces in uh, the in metal transfer they are gravitational force right the gravitational force determined by the uh, the angle cos theta whether you are doing a downward welding or up hand welding. If you are doing a down hand, it is always assist the Doppler transfer. And then you have a plasma jet or aerodynamic drag F D and then electromagnetic forces. So, most of the cases Lorentz force always assist because creating a narrow arc is very difficult. Okay. So, you always have a droplet diameter much much smaller than the arc envelope diameter. So, you always see that Lorentz force aid Lorentz force aids the droplet detachment right. So, these three forces F D plus F E M and F G if it is equal to the vapor jet plus surface tension is equilibrium situation right. So, if the droplet should be detached either G must be the force gravitons force must be higher and this is fixed that is the the process parameter right and then Lorentz force its function of current. So, what current are you operating? So, in this case suppose if you are if you want to detach a droplet so either your gravity should assist or your Lorentz force should assist right to overcome the forces that are resisting the Doppler detachment which are vapor jet force and surface tension force. Yes, is clear. So, how does the gravity work? So, this is the force balance I was talking about. So, you have a droplet the vapor jet force is coming from the vapor F V. So, they will always come from the workpiece towards the droplet. So, the force would always resist the surface tension would keep the droplet in its position is not it. 
So, it would not allow droplet to detach because you are creating new surface area. Right? So, these two forces would always oppose. Right? And then gravity, if it is down and welding, would act to assist the droplet detachment. Similarly, plasma drag force, which is the my blow. In arc, it is a plasma jet, would always assist the double detachment. And then you have Lorentz force. If the Lorentz force is always diverging, it will always assist the detachment. Right, it is clear. So, if in this equation, so this is material parameter, this is in a way material parameter is not it the, the vapor generation and this is process parameter. So, now the two things we can independently change is gravity which it cannot be changed, but the force can be manipulated by changing the mass is not it. So, m g or you can change the current right. So, we look at independently now each equation, then we can understand how the droplet shape can be changed as a function of this parameter, right? Current as well as the droplet size. So, gravity, so this is what? 4 by 3 pi r cube, volume times density, it is mass, is not it? Suppose, if you are operating very low current, extremely low current, there is no influence of Lorentz force, right. So, then if you want to detach a droplet, you need to maximize the mass, so that droplet can be detached, right. So, now we already see the video, I showed you two videos. So, one your, the one, one of the wires, it was, it was transferring as a globes, individual globes. So, why are they doing it? Because in that case, we intensely kept the current extremely low, so that droplet detachment is seen as a globes, which is assisted by the gravity, is not it? So, the moment the droplet reaches a critical mass, if Lorentz force is very low, the current is very low, the droplet can be detached by the gravitational force. That is why when you are welding at very low currents, you always see globular transfer. The transfer happens as the globes. That is because the, ma the main force which assists the Doppler transfer is gravity, right. So, that is what you know as a globular transfer, we will see in the subsequent slides very clearly. So, when at the low current, when the Lorentz force is not maximized, it is the maximum force that influence the droplet attachment is a gravity. And gravity is influenced by mass. So, in order to achieve the droplet transfer, the droplet should reach critical mass, then it can be transferred. Yes, it is clear. So, the term here is cos theta. So, this is a very significant force when you are doing it in low current. So, for 1.6 mm diameter in argon low current, so it can be say 260 to 600 10 power minus 5 Newton the force. Yes, it is clear. So, 1.6 mm it is coming around uh, 600 times 10 power minus 5 Newton. So, for uh, when the Lorentz force is very, very small, at lower currents, the gravity is the main force which would detach the droplet. That is why at lower currents, you see global transfer, because the, the droplet has to grow in its size to attain the critical mass and then it can drop, right, it is clear. So, now the other force, the aerodynamic force or plasma drag force, it is depending on the gas velocity and density of the gas and of course, the drag coefficients. So, when uh, 
you are using convective gas for example. So, you can have a very high plasma jet velocity creator. So, that means that in that case the Doppler diameter will be much smaller when it is detached. Okay. So, in that case the process the shielding gas can also influence your uh, Doppler attachment. For example, for the same current, same the, the material chemistry, if you change the shielding gas, your plasma jet velocity can also change. If that is the case, then Fd can also influence the Doppler attachment, right? It is clear? Yes or no? So, plasma jet force for a given process, given shielding condition is fixed, you cannot change. Right, because it is a function of a shielding gas, okay, and the velocity as well as the density of the gas. Right, is clear? And if you keep all the parameters constant, if you change the shielding gas, then you will see the effect of the shielding gas on the Doppler transfer because the drag force will change. Yes, clear? Yes, okay, good. And this force like it is a blow force like I did it when I was detaching droplet, if I blow faster I would detach the smaller droplets. If I blow slowly the force is getting balanced, so droplets can grow. So now the angle is 45 degree, if you are doing like this if you are doing it different. So now the angle is 45, so cos 45, so gravity influence is negligible. So, the my drag force, the aerodynamic force, it, it has to overcome the surface tension. Okay? So, if surface tension is maximized, droplet cannot be detached, it will grow, is not it? If you are doing very slowly, the surface tension is keeping the droplet in its position. So, the, the my drag force is not overcoming the surface tension force, so droplet is not detached, is not it? So, droplet is growing in size, suddenly if I tilt my head, you may see droplet detaching because gravity would assist. You want to try? Okay, so, but then the force balancing will be very tricky. I will have to make sure that when I am growing like that and doing like this, the drag force would be same. It is very tricky, let us see. So, I need to overcome the surface tension, right. So, drag force is all the, the now overcoming the surface tension. See already Doppler diameter is decreasing, is not it? So, if you want to make a bigger bubble, you need to blow like this, okay. It is already there. I am running out of breath. So, <laughs> my drag force is decreasing. <laughs> so, you can play around. So, you, based on the gravity, the drag force, the balancing force is surface tension. So, I need to overcome the surface tension to get the bubbles to detach from the whatever instrument, right? It is clear. The same thing over here also. The plasma drag force, if I am blowing really fast, the bubbles can be detached much faster. Right? It's clear. So then the, the drag force overcomes that becomes the rate controlling than the gravity. Right? It's clear. Good. So the third force which assists the Lorentz force. So again, you can use the equation to calculate. So it's magnetic permeability, and this this is exist and uh, the entry radius. So R is entry radius, for example. So this is wire. Okay, and then you have a droplet formed and something like this arc. The ratio between the radius, between these radius. Right? So, if R A is bigger than R, your Lorentz force would assist the droplet detachment, is not it? Because then the fundamental, what is the Lorentz force? 
Lorentz force is force generated between the, the, the basic particles of electrons and ions. Okay, so when you keep it closer to each other, then you create enormous amount of Lorentz force, and then the, how the particle would travel if they are diverging. For example, in this case, so obviously the the uh, the electrons are which are generated which diverge in the R column. That means that while diverging, they can assist the droplet to detach from the tip. So, so suppose if R G R A is different. Now, R A is smaller than your R. So, now in this case, R A. So, if R A is smaller than R, then these electron particles would try to converge, is not it? So, this term becomes smaller. So, obviously, then what will happen? So if they are trying to converge, they would not assist the transfer transfer Doppler transfer right. So, they would try to shrink the droplet right. So, they would try to because it is a bubble is there and the force is pulling the droplet. So, they would resist the Doppler transfer. See in most of the welding case our arc diameter or arc envelope uh, diameter will be much much larger than your Doppler diameter. So, you always have a situation where your arc would be much larger than your filler wire. So, in that case your Lorentz force would always assist the droplet detachment. And this becomes very significant when you increase the current. Okay, so when the current is increased, Lorentz force becomes highly significant. That droplet can be attached with smaller mass. Okay, because plasma drag force is a function of your sealing gas, your gas velocity. For a given process condition, it is fixed. Right? So suppose if you want to minimize the Doppler diameter. What we do? I current. So, the Lorentz force can detach the droplet with much finer diameter, right. So, in the video, I showed you two conditions same wire, everything is fixed. So, this wire the welding is done with low current, in this wire, welding is done with high current. You see LED influence. In low current case, droplet is detached after achieving a critical mass. Whereas, in this case, the dropper diameter is much smaller, is not it? It is like like a spray, the droplets are transferred and continuous drops. So, the drops overlap, it becomes stream or spray, we call it. So, in this transfer, we call it globular transfer, whereas in here, we call it a spray transfer because the drops are all accumulated and becomes continuous spray. Yes, it is clear. So, these three forces would always assist gravity again assume that we always do down hand welding right, it is clear. So, the Lorentz force that has explained. So, if your exist radius is smaller than inter radius it would always resist. That means, that arc is very narrow. The electrons would converge, they will not diverge. So, in this case, the exit radius R A is larger than the entry radius, that means, it will diverse. Okay. If you increase the current further, so you also increase the, the arc envelope. That means, that the droplet can be detached with very small diameter. Right, you have maximum divergence, and this situation will can also happen. So, when you are increasing the mass significantly, then you also have a diverging path, even if arc 
a converging path even if arc diameter is arc can be larger. So, we will see in the in subsequent transfer case how will that happen. So, in most of the cases in a welding case based on the nature of uh, the Lorentz force convergence and diversions. Okay, so, if your arc envelope is very narrow and if uh, the, the, the exit path is narrower than your entry path, then the Lorentz force would resist that is uh, highly unlikely in arc welding case. In most of the arc welding case this is the situation and if you increase the current this becomes like that. Yes, it is clear? Good. Any questions so far? Yes or no? Nope. Good. Again, two forces would oppose, and these two forces should always be overcome if you want to do welding. Otherwise, there is no GMAW, isn't it? Doppler will not transfer. The two forces would resist the Doppler transfer are vapor jet force and surface tension. And if you are not overcoming, then you can't weld. Right. So, the vapor jet force is, is coming from the, the vaporization of the metal. Okay. So, the total the mass vaporized per second for a given current and the current density and the vapor density. So, vapor jet force would always oppose the Doppler detachment and you can calculate. Right. And then the last force surface tension surface tension again the, the function of composition right. So, diameter you can calculate the surface tension of the, the molten droplet from the droplet diameter and this function this is the coefficient of surface tension and then uh, you have an uh, uh, the, the capillary actions that is determining the, the surface tension right. It strongly depends on composition because if you change the composition surface tension also change right. So, suppose if you want to drop uh, transfer droplet with lower surface tension then you need to add some elements ok. So, we can enable or you can assist the Doppler transfer by adding fluxes ok. So, in uh, MMAW or flux through arc welding we add fluxes so that you no know, you can play around the surface tension of the droplet the droplet can be detached at low current. Okay, so, that is the role of flux to play around with the surface tension. If you look at the all the values will be same except the Lorentz force. The Lorentz force value can be very tricky I do not know whether I have value yeah see that 0 0.02 times I square. So, when the current is increased the Lorentz force increase exponentially right whereas the other forces would remain in a similar amount 10 power minus 5 Newton right it is clear good.